The year was 2007. The first iPhone was announced. Tumblr launched to the public, and Barack Obama announced his candidacy to become President of the United States. My candidacy for President of the United States of America. But perhaps bigger than all of those, 2007 was the year that the biggest online rhythm game was born. Created by one man, this game has withstood the test of time, building a worldwide community of unwaveringly dedicated fans and competitors. This is the largest rhythm game in the world. Welcome to us. Click the circles. Our story begins two years before the initial release of Osu. In 2005, a Japanese rhythm game called Us, Tatake, Wendan, more commonly referred to as Wendan, was released on the Nintendo DS. The game was developed by Innis, who had previously worked on Guitaru Man, a rhythm game for the PS2 in 2001, along with the Beatmania Da series of rhythm games that came out on the PC. With plenty of experience in the rhythm game genre, Innis took advantage of the Nintendo DS's innovative new touchscreen, which provided a brand new experience. Instead of just pressing buttons that correspond with the color or lane, players had to tap circles and hold onto sliders with the stylus instead. While the game was only released domestically in Japan, the game became insanely popular and was heavily imported all over the world. This led to the production of a sequel made for an international audience, called Elite Beat Agents, which featured the same gameplay as the original. Many fell in love with these games, the most notable being Dean Herbert, better known as Peppy. Today, you might know him as the creator, developer, and publisher of the PC game Osu. Inspired by Wendon, Peppy released Osu to the public on September 16, 2007. Much of the culture and community around Osu was based around anime, and much of its initial player base was from East Asian countries and a small community in the West. While the game was essentially a copy of Wendon, there were quite a few differences between the two games. Without a touchscreen to play on, Osu was played with a mouse and keyboard, and players navigated their cursor and tapped two keys on their keyboard instead of clicking on circles. You can also use the left and right clicks on your mouse, but good luck with that. In order to better replicate the Oenden feeling, some players began integrating their drawing tablets to emulate the use of the stylus, as well as some other unique and uh, interesting ways of playing the game. Along with that, rather than a campaign, Osu had a play menu that consisted of several song selections that users were able to choose from. With an automated star difficulty system dictated by an algorithm, players were able to play through songs at a level that best fit their skill set. What set Osu apart from its DS predecessor was the fact that it had an edit mode. This meant that players were able to take any songs they wanted and make a beat map out of it. So it wasn't just up to Peppy to keep pumping out new songs for people to enjoy. Beat mappers from around the world began experimenting with their favorite tracks. However, it took some time before beat mappers were able to really innovate and explore all the potential the game had to offer. This game came from a DS game. It was really simple. And so the, those DS games were the only maps people really based their uh, design philosophies on. So all the early maps in Osu in 2007, 2008 were designed to be basically mimicking the DS games maps. As time went on, people sort of started to push things a little bit. People were designing maps in slightly different ways, but not way too different, just ways that sort of push, push the limits just enough for people to not be like complaining about it, saying this is complete trash, but enough to be innovative. And it's very hard to really like push things beyond a certain level within a short period of time. So that's why mapping has changed so gradually. It's because it's all about community acceptance and people can't accept really big changes all at once. As beat mappers continue to innovate and push things forward, the community's opinion on what was considered the norm changed as well. From early beat mappers like Natsume Rin, Skystar, and Hollow Wings, the community worked hard to push the limitations of what Osu could be. A lot of people's standards are sort of formed when they're like, when they just start playing the game. So as more new people come in, they're exposed to crazier and crazier mapping ideas. And those crazier and crazier mapping ideas become the norm as the old people sort of retire. For me, someone who's been mapping for like eight years, uh, I have to intentionally consider, okay, this is outside of my comfort zone in terms of what I consider acceptable. But so many people consider it acceptable nowadays that I just need to change my standards because of that. 
An issue quickly became apparent as the game grew in popularity. Because when players are able to upload any song they want to, legal troubles are sure to follow. The game was sort of founded like the same as any other rhythm game simulator where the point of it is to let anyone create a level for any song. As much as people don't want to admit it, that's sort of how rhythm game simulators work, like Clone Hero and anything else. A solution was created to provide beat mappers with pre-approved songs through the Featured Artist program. The program allowed artists to work with Osu to make some of their songs available for use as beat maps. In an effort to encourage beat mappers to create beat maps with these songs, officially hosted Osu beat mapping contests were held. Along with that, the Mappers Guild was also created, which would reward beat mappers for using the featured artist songs. The goal was eventually to make it so people would want to map these featured artist songs more. And so I changed the structure of the Mappers Guild to be more of like a like an MMO sort of thing where people would earn rewards for mapping licensed music, basically. And through that, it completely changed how featured artist stuff was considered by the public. Because after this Mappers Guild thing went more public, it encouraged a lot more people to start mapping licensed music stuff. As Osu continued to grow, players began getting more and more competitive as they competed to reach the top of the scoreboards and increase their performance points. As a result, some players quickly rose to the top and became more widely known. Out of all of them, the one that stood out most was Cookie Z, who many still consider to be the GOAT of Osu. Cookie Z is, is widely considered to be like the greatest and most accomplished Osu player of all time. Basically from the years 2010 to like 2018, he was just undefeated in everything. Nobody could match his skill level, nobody could do anything when it came to him. He beat records that nobody thought would be broken, he pushed the limits of, of play, he would play stuff that people thought, oh no, not even, you know, a robot could do that, and then he just does it. it it's crazy, the things that he's done. While Cookie Z dominated the early days of Osu, health issues with his eyes forced him to step away from the game. To do so, he wanted to make sure he couldn't return and asked the Osu staff to delete his account, a request that was denied. As a result, Cookie Z took matters into his own hands. He decided, well, if they won't do it, I will do it. And he downloaded cheats and then cheated on purpose to get banned. There's, there's even quite a few players who like were inspired by what he did and they were like, you know what, I've wanted to quit for the longest time, let me do it. Or even, you know, people well down the line who, who not even necessarily being inspired by it, but were just like, oh yeah, I want to quit, so let me just cheat so I can get banned. And just, <laughs> he just sort of started like a trend in a sense. With Cookie Z banned and gone from the scene, many other top players tried to claim the title of best player in Osu whether by climbing through the rankings or by competing in the tournament scene that was quickly developing. Another OG legend to add to the list of greats is Wub Wolf Wolf, a player who solidified his top spot on the leaderboards for more than a decade. Although they were quickly able to adapt to the ever-changing styles of beatmaps, Wub Wolf Wolf is known to be the best old beatmap player out today. He's been playing the game since the year 2008. He just keeps coming, he keeps playing. He's still like one of the best players in the world, even to this day. He's just so consistent about it. Older maps tend to be a lot more like awkward because the, the people who were making the maps didn't quite know like what worked yet. It, it was before like there was a lot of theory around mapping. So the, the maps turned out very awkward, stilted, and, and not a lot of people, you know, find them comfortable at all. But Bubble Wolf, he, uh, he, that was the time period where he started playing. So he just keeps playing those maps over and over again. And he, he has scores that just blow everybody out of the water on those maps. He loves them. They would find success early on in their Osu career, even winning their first ever online tournament only a year after they started playing at Osu's tag team multiplayer tournament hosted in 2009. Since then, Wub Wolf Wolf would stay true to their dominance by staying within the top 50 ranked Osu players for 10 whole years. Osu tournaments come in many forms, but in general, all tournaments revolve around getting a better score than your opponent. With tons of modding potential, there's a lot of strategizing involved that affects the results of a match. This is especially true in a team format, where teams are able to sub players in and out depending on what type of beat map they're playing. Usually 
tournaments test skill sets so he would make sure that you have every skill set covered or like to the best of your abilities for example a speed pick you would have your speed players go in for that map and there's also a chance where someone can play like every map you know they're that good so they could just stay in the lobby the whole match while all tournaments are community organized the tournaments that have become the biggest and most prestigious is the osu world cup the world cup is an annual country-based four versus four team tournament during each match Teams compete against each other on a beat map chosen from a pool of pre-selected songs, and the team that has the most points at the end of the song wins the game. The first World Cup took place in 2011 from February 22nd to April 11th, with 28 countries taking part. When all was said and done, Taiwan took home the first World Cup. Over the next few years, Asian countries continued dominating the first few World Cups, with Korea winning three straight titles and Japan winning one afterwards. But pretty soon, there was a shift as the game became more popular in the West. Like 2015, it used to be lots of Asian countries, things like that, because that's where the game was super popular. And then it sort of exploded in the West, the United States, Europe, it became very popular. The United States has been an undisputed powerhouse since then, except 2017, when Poland just randomly won. <laughs> the US had like a super team lined up and then Poland just won with Wolf. Though the entire team of Poland showed up big time, Wolf Wolf went all out on the last map. On a beat map that was only full cleared four times in its entire existence, Wub Wolf Wolf was able to full clear it on Osu's biggest stage. Oh yes, my hands are trembling. Not even, oh. They are. Oh, Poland finally got something. As the champions of half of the World Cups that have been played so far, the United States has become the undisputed best country for Osu. While the country is filled with a lot of amazing players, the best in the country is Vaxe, who many even consider the best player in the world. Vaxe has not lost a tournament since 2018. And it's not like he's like picking like, oh, this is the easy tournament. He picks like the hardest tournaments in the game. You can see he has World Cups in here. He has like, the perennial was a $10,000 tournament. You know, so was Drench Program and, and this and that. He has not lost a tournament since 2018. And he has been playing like the hardest tournaments. Although Vaxe is considered to be the best player in the world, he is also taking a break as he decided to sit out the recent World Cup in 2021. Despite the US losing half of its previous team, they still ended up dominating and taking home the world title. And the United States takes first place. That's kind of just the OWC <laughs> script, but uh, they've earned it and they deserved it back to back to back to back four years in a row. Six out of the last seven. Just an unprecedented period of dominance in OSU standard for the USA. Overall, while tournaments like the OSU World Cup are an amazing showcase for some of the best players in the world, the tournament doesn't fully match the prestige. While the competitive scene has a lot of room to grow, considering how big Osu has grown since its release, Osu has mostly officially supported its competitive scene through profile badges for players who perform well at tournaments and the Osu supporter perks. I think one of the biggest roadblocks is the the lack of support that the the creator of Osu gives. He his focus was never to like make this an esport thing or like you know grow it to be something ginormous or something like that like that's definitely one of the roadblocks that his support for like this type of thing it's not his biggest interest i guess 15 years after its initial release osu shows no signs of slowing down with over 15 million unique registered users while the game has had its share of controversies it has come a long way since its humble beginnings if things change in the future and osu receives more support from the rest of the community the game will be able to grow even more Maybe soon, we'll see esports organizations sponsoring their own rhythm teams and a legitimate esports circuit for one of the most popular games in the world. What are your thoughts on Osu? Is there any merit to the competitive scene? Or should it just stay a score attack game where players try and beat harder and harder beat maps? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. See you next time. This video is made possible thanks to our wonderful patrons. 
Massive thank you to everyone on this list, and shout out to Jason B, Brendan, QB, Foxy, Mauve, Pachanas, Pin, Sierra, Shampoo, Spartacus, and Yashichi for being Platinum supporters. And an extra special shout out to Steven, Noodles, Marco, and Flight for being Diamond supporters. We appreciate all the support. If you want to talk to us, check out our Discord. If you want to support our channel and get info on unreleased videos, check out our Patreon. If you want to help us out in a different way, leaving a like, subscribing, and hitting the bell to stay up to date is also appreciated. My name is Jonah, thanks for watching.